Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get your weapon racks and weapon plaques to work. If you're anything like me, you've spent a long time trying to get these stupid things to just function as they're supposed to, and they just don't want to work. So I'm going to go through some of the quirks with these things and how to get around them and make them just work. So I will also have a section near the end of the video if you do anything like build your own house, hearthfire style stuff, where you may have linked them to an X marker and had them enable and they break. I'm going to show you a good workaround for that as well because they do not like being messed with scripts, enabling and disabling. You have to do something a bit different. So let's dive into it. Okay, so the first method that I'm going to show you is to set these up manually. It's a really good thing to do because it's a surefire way of making sure that they're going to work and then you can tweak them to where they need to be. You can set the different types up easily enough and it's always good to have an understanding of how things go together and work uh, rather than just copying and pasting. Although copying and pasting, especially if you're dealing with a lot of weapon racks and plaques, uh, is probably going to be a good method. If you want to skip to that method, then just click the timestamps down below, either in the video or in the description. Now, to set these up manually, uh, it's rather interesting. Uh, if you go to the object window and under filter and just type in weapon, then click under world objects and activator, we are going to be creating a plaque first and a weapon rack second. The weapon rack has a couple of little differences, uh, but for the most part, these are set up in the same way. Now with weapon plaques, you can of course set them up in a few different variations. Uh, one variation being that you can have a bow or a single weapon on there, like a big long sword and nothing else. Uh, the way that we're going to set this one up is where you can have something on the left, something on the right, and something in the middle like a shield. Uh, we're going to set that one up and there's probably a, a another way of doing it, I can't quite remember. Um, but then you've also got your weapon rack as well, uh, which like I say we'll do after this. So to do these manually, what you want to make 100% sure that you are doing is using the correct sort of bases for the weapon plaques and the correct activators for the weapon plaques. So what I mean by that is you need to look out for the player house ones if you're putting these in player homes. Otherwise, they're probably not going to work. They're going to take weapons or not let you get weapons back and yeah just make sure you're using the player house ones these are the ones that you want so when you filtered by weapon under activator you should see this nice list here and you can see we've got the plaques we've got the racks we've also got things like uh, display cases which would be for a different video um, and what you want to do is get the the base of it first so the non-activator versions so if i go ahead and right click and preview and just spin this round. You can hit G on the keyboard to hide the ground there, by the way. Nice little tip. And you can see these are the parts that I want. So I want the three parts to put this plaque together. And what I'm going to do is make sure I've got the left playhouse version. Drag and drop that in. Let's just move that over with the arrow keys. And you want to ensure that you've got snap to grid enabled. So you'll see I've got it on here. You can just tick these two options. Or you can use Control Q and Q for each one while you've got the uh, render window selected and you can turn those on and off as you can see if you look at the top there. So I'm going to make sure I've got my snap to grid on. This puts them together perfectly and make sure you won't have any issues. Then I'm going to rotate them, move them into place and I've got the left piece there. Then I'm going to get the right non-activator piece there. You'll see that should snap together quite nicely. And then I'm going to get the middle piece as well. So it's that little dot that you get in the middle that is for the shields put that in. Lighting's not very good. I'm just going to tap A so that I can see a little more clearly without any shadows and whatnot. And you can also click like the little light bulb up there just to change the lighting should you need to make it a bit easier to see. And now that I've got the base put together quite nicely, I'm going to need the activators. So you can go ahead and drag and drop these in. They're like these nice little white blocks. You can drag and drop them in or you can hold down control and select all three pieces of the weapon rack. If you want to make doubly sure that you've got them selected, you can check in the cell view where they've got them highlighted, or you can just tap one, tap it again, and if what disappears is what you're expecting to have selected, then you've got the right thing selected. If you tap one again, you'll reshow it. And if you hold down Control and D, you will make a duplicate of these three objects and just drag them forward about four places 
and then you can hit control F on just one of them. So if I select one of them, do control F, and then you'll see I'm going to replace it with the activator version. So I'm looking for the same name, but with activator slotted in there, hit OK. And that means that the rotation is going to be exactly the same or the placement will be exactly the same, which is absolutely perfect. If I do control F on the other one as well, and I can just use my scroll wheel to go up, I can select that one. I'm going to select the shield base as well and do the same thing. And like I say, just gets the positioning exactly the same and it makes it a little bit quicker, a little bit easier when you get into doing it. Now, you would need to put these together so that they're hugging each other and they're in exact same position, but we don't want to do that just yet. What we need to do is go ahead and link them up with some link references. So in order to do that, we are going to use the activators first. So double click on one of them, I'll do the left one. And then under the linked ref tab, you need to double click in this box here and use select reference in render window, double click on the base, and then you are looking for WR rack, and you're looking for trigger, and you wanna click okay. You wanna do that for all three. So I'm gonna do the right one next. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but select the right part of the rack, WR rack, and we're looking for trigger. And then the same for the centerpiece as well. Select reference, and just make sure looking at the ref that you've got selected the right piece. WR rack and trigger again. Now you may have guessed this, but now what we're going to do is the other way around. So we're gonna double click on these and link ref them back to the activators. And this time we're gonna use the keyword W rack activator on each of those. Let's just set that up. And there we go, lovely dribbly. So those are together. We want to snap those up to each other now. And we should be uh, pretty good to go in terms of the basic setup. Now, things get a little weird here. This is where you may have put all of this together previously and it doesn't want to work. So the weird thing about Skyrim triggers and activators and whatnot is they do not like perfect placement whatsoever. These are snapped to a grid perfectly. And if we just look at the 3D data, you can see they're on absolutely perfect angles. Now, it may or may not work this way. So what you may want to do is go ahead, select these three, hit M on the keyboard. That's for markers. You can hide the markers. You've still got them selected. You can still see the outlines. But what it lets you do is hold down control, select the other three parts of the plaque, and then drag them, don't worry, although you can't see the markers, they are moving with it, you can tap M again, and you wanna put this thing against the wall, so I'm just gonna rehide them, position it where I want. You can see that because it's on the grid, it's not hugging the wall, so I'm just gonna do Control Q and Q, and then I'm gonna hold down X, seems to be the right axis here, and I'm just gonna drag and push it against the wall exactly where I want it. Now, what you'll need to do is save at this point, Go in the game, see if it works. If it works, fantastic. And by works, I mean you can put an object on there, you can take an object off, and then where it can tend to get a little bit screwy is when you want to put an object back. And you might find that the activator that says left rack has disappeared, or whatever one you just activated. If that happens, it means it is not working. So try putting things on, taking them off, putting things on, taking them off. If it doesn't work, then you're going to need to use this little trick. Now, you may have heard of this before, but there's also a little bit more to it from my experience. What you need to do is essentially go into 3D data and just stick a 1 on the end of each of these, or better yet, 0.1 rather than 0.001. That doesn't tend to work. And just have them slightly rotated, ever so slightly. Now... Sometimes even this doesn't work and it's still incredibly picky about the placement. But essentially what you need to do, you do not need to move the base. The base doesn't matter. That should in theory not glitch out. That should be perfectly fine. So this doesn't have to be skew if on the wall looking terrible. You just need to move the activators which you don't see in game anyway. So if you're having an awful lot of trouble just to make 100% sure that they're working, just select all of them and just put them slightly off. It's not gonna look great in the kit, but it doesn't matter. 
because in the game they're still going to be roughly in the in the right position so just basically offset them and you should be good another thing to note that i've seen is if you've got anything like special effects or weird wall collision going on certain large objects and special effects may stop the weapon rack from working as well so if worse comes to the worst you may need to just drag it away from the wall a bit and even pull it down so another trick is if you're actually putting this plaque quite high up then you may well want to put the markers a little further down so that you can get to them easy enough and then you can activate the bottom of the weapon to pick it back off the wall but this allows you to put things on really easily these don't actually need to sit with the plaque it's just neater that way and probably best and it's sort of the closest to it but if you are having trouble spin it around move it about and try and get it to work that way so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo some of those changes. I'm going to push that back and I'm just going to keep it sort of rotated a fair amount. And if you go into the 3D data, you'll see it's quite off by a, by a fair bit. That should help. So the next bit is weapon racks. These work in pretty much the same way. So I'll do this a little bit quicker. And what we need to do is go under the weapon rack here. And we're going to want the base object. So I put my snap to grid back on. Put that roughly where I want to be. Just hide those cobwebs. And you can slot two on this wall here. So I'm going to pull them away. I'm not going to put them exactly where I want them just yet. I'm going to duplicate, put one there. And then I'm going to get the end pieces, which are actually under static because they don't do anything. So they're the end caps. This is where some of the differences lie. So you want to get your end caps. Put them in the correct position and then we want to go back to activator and i need to get the middle activators for player house and put them into position duplicate one of those and then again oh sorry i don't know why i did that i'm going to hide those and then i want to link these up Uh, do my WR rack activator. So you'll see it, it can actually be pretty quick when you know what you're doing and you end up running through in no time. Make sure you get the right keywords, obviously. Do that one in there. Trigger for that as well. And then push those together. Now, these tend to be a lot less picky than the plaques do, but they can also have issues. So I'm actually going to keep these ones perfectly straight, and we're going to go in game. We're going to see if that works okay. And then I'm just going to drag those with snap to grid off into the position that I need them. And fingers crossed, those are going to work for us. So we're going to go in game now, see how they're working, and then we're going to move on to just do a copy and paste job and see how that works for us as well. Okay, so I did need to go ahead and do some messing here back in the creation kit. One of the biggest things and one of the things that I did mention is the fact that the wall was interfering. So in this case, it was actually the collision of the wall is not flush with the wall, which is uh, not great. So you can see it's a bit of a gap uh, with the weapon plaque there, which is really irritating. Um, so I had to bring it forward. So in this case, you'd need to get creative, use a different wall or whatever you can do to have that flush against it. Uh, so that the collision isn't actually stopping you from taking the weapon racks off. Uh, the weapons off, sorry. Uh, the other thing is I experienced the problem where weapons may be upside down, not placed on there properly, or it wouldn't give you them back. So I had to go ahead and tweak it slightly. So I had to rotate it by exactly 0.1 of a degree, and then they worked. So as you can see now, when I go and activate the weapon plaque, it goes on there. It should be on there like that correctly. And if I go ahead and try and put it back on, it should work. There we go. And that should work for each of the sections. So I'll even try something else here. There we go. Lovely dribbly. And then the sword maybe on that side. And then the shield in the middle. 
there we go take the shield off put the shield back so as you can see it's working now we've got the other one over here and I haven't tested this one just yet but it's flush against the wall which is a bit worrying we're going to try and put a bow on it but as you can see I can't activate it however if I was to put TCL on which is toggling collision I can probably get in there and select it so in this case the the rack itself is partially working and it's not actually it's not working so this is going to be another case of rotating it by a degree um, so the rack was kind of half working but the wall was getting in the way the collision of the wall so there's quite a lot of variables when it does come to weapon plaques and racks but they can be set up manually they can work it's just knowing those quirks so to sort of summarize you've got objects that may just be interfering with it uh, they could be interfering with it in the sense that they're just too close to it or the collision in this case is kind of passing over where you would usually be able to grab the weapon and you also have the rotation of the weapon rack for some reason the game does not like perfect positioning and you may need to tweak it by 0.1 of a degree or just move it wildly with snap to grid turned off and see but you don't need to move the actual physical visible racks themselves they could be placed how you want them as long as they're not behind any other collision of another object so you can actually press f4 in the creation kit uh, to show and hide collision you'll be able to get an idea of if they're going to be overlapping collision or whatnot but otherwise you should be able to get weapon racks and weapon blacks work uh, as i've shown you there but be patient with them they are a royal pain in the butt and they are one of the worst things in the game so now we're going to go ahead and dive into just a copy and paste method from the warehouses. Okay, so for the copying and pasting instead, so if you've got a lot of these to deal with and you just can't be bothered to do them manually and you want to try the copy and paste method, you can download um, any of the mods out there that have all of these laid out nicely in cells for you in their different ways or you can try the warehouse cells so under the cell view here if you type anywhere inside of here on any cell and you do uh, warehouse start typing warehouse you'll see you've got a load of warehouse cells here and you want to go to the prefab so before i go there i'm just going to go ahead delete all of this i'm just going to delete this plaque i'm only going to do it for a plaque i'm not going to copy a rack because it's it's pretty much the same thing i'm just going to hide those i'm going to go to the warehouse cell that i want so prefabs and in here you can see they've got a load of plaques racks different variations different numbers of them and you'll also see another interesting thing where the weapons are already there so things that are already placed on the rack so if you arrive in a home or in a location and you want to see that there are already some weapons there this is kind of a cool thing you can do uh, if you double click on the activator you can do a link reference direct to the weapon no keyword uh, seems to be required here uh, which is really cool and it will attach that weapon to the plaque or rack by default uh, which is really cool and what you can do here is essentially as I said it's a copy and paste job so we can take the same kind of detailed one as we had I think this one will work just double check that they are the player house ones these ones aren't as you can see which is why sometimes a mod can be better I'm not sure if any of these are the player home ones they probably aren't but in theory you can copy them and then you can just replace them with the player home parts so let's go ahead and give that a go so just make sure I've got them selected I'm using double tapping one to hide things and M to hide, hide and show markers alt one to reshow everything uh, this just means that I can ensure that I've got what I need selected another way of seeing all the items that you've got selected is the dash key uh, the batch menu here will let you see everything that you've got selected in real time so you can see I've got the left right the middle and the three activators and none of them are the player versions but I'm going to do Control C copy those and I'm going to make my way to the white run breeze home so in the white run breeze home here let's spin around go back to my wall and I'm just going to paste and rotate it with snap to grid on. I'm just going to hit M, see where this is. 
And like I just mentioned in game, I've got the collision showing using F4. So you can see that you get all these lines and you kind of see the collision around things. And you can get a rough idea, the perspective's not brilliant, but you can get an idea of where the collision for this wall is. It's actually miles away from the wall itself. So I want to make sure again, that in this case, just to make it work, you can actually see that that black line if you squint a little, sort of passing through the black. I want it past that line and that should be okay. And then if I double click on these, I'll go into 3D data. I want to make sure they are offset by 0.1. So 90.1 there. Oops, sorry, wrong thing. It's not the uh, the base that I want. It's these activators. So the activators, because they snapped a grid, they've lost any rotation that was hopefully preventing that bug. And in theory, that should be good. And then, like I said, because we want this for a player house, we'll do Control F. And then the first one that should show up for each of these is player house. So you just do Control F, check it, confirm it. So player house versions of all of these. So as you can see, it starts to get to the point where you could probably set them up manually yourself anyway. And you'll be good to go, but it's just worth showing. Oh, whoops a daisy. That was wrong. It was meant to be mid player house. There we go. So it's the same name, but with player house on the end. So this needs to be left player house and that needs to be right player house as well. And then save. And I'm not going to dive in kit because it's just the same thing pretty much. Uh, not, not kit. I'm not going to dive in game. Uh, going into the game is just going to show us the exact same thing that we already saw working. But that's how you can do a copy and paste. Um, a little bit easier if you do use um, any of the mods out there. There are some resources on the Nexus, if I remember. I'll link a couple down in the description uh, where they have cells laid out without any rubbish in there and it's just the plaques and you can just drag over, copy, paste in your home, make sure the rotations are good and there's no collision barriers anywhere in the way and you're good to go. So the final thing that we're now going to move on to is what do you do when you're dealing with a build your own home, a craftable home system? Let's take a look at it. Okay, so if you're still with me, it's probably because you want to know how you get these weapon racks and plaques to work alongside a build your own home system similar to Hearthfire. So what this means is you'll be able to uh, see the weapon racks when you craft them, but before you've crafted anything and the place is empty, similar to the vanilla houses, similar to Hearthfire, uh, then nothing's going to be activatable, they're not going to be visible. But if you do the usual method of just enable parenting them, I've found in my experience they just don't work. It breaks them beyond belief, despite the fact that Hearthfire uses an enable parent system. It must do something else in the background as well. But this is my solution to it. So um, what we're going to do is... We've come into Breeze Home. I've got my new crafting system set up, which I don't have a tutorial on just yet, but it is coming. So make sure that you are subscribed for that. And I'll be using my new crafting system here. I've already set the majority of it up to enable these weapon racks from the workbench that I've put in the corner. I went ahead and obliterated a load of objects in Breeze Home just so that they're out of the way for the tutorial and there's, uh, there's not too much in our way. And what I need to do is essentially place a collision box over the weapon rack so that nothing can be activated because these activators are going to always be visible. They are never going to be enable parented or disabled or anything, but we don't want the player to touch these before they've technically been crafted. So the way to do this, let's hide those markers and let's select either part of the rack it's perfectly fine just a main section of it and click on the collision box icon at the top in the toolbar and you'll see it does a pretty decent job of going over the top of it i'm going to now pull these parts out by the way if this is being really janky and weird it might be if you've got a preview window open because you'll notice if you've got a preview window open it basically messes up the functionality of the gizmo for changing collision boxes and triggers I don't know why, but um, it just does. So let's go ahead and tweak these 
trigger boxes, you want to give yourself a little bit of space around the edges just to make absolutely sure the player can't activate, but you don't want it coming out so far that the player's going to go and run right into an invisible brick wall and wonder what the heck's going on. So it's got to be pretty sneaky that it's there. You wouldn't really notice otherwise, uh, but enough that it's going to stop you from activating those markers. Now, clearly we can't see the markers, so I'm going to do Alt-1 because I hid them. And the collision box do, does actually need to come out, and it needs to cover these markers up it needs to cover up these activators not markers it needs to cover the activators completely so that it's inside and the player can't activate now in a normal scenario where i haven't got this stupid badly sort of meshed wall with a terrible collision as we as we discovered uh, this would be close to the wall and the chances of the player coming up and bumping into that are going to be quite slim so I've got my collision box that is going to be enabled by default so it's not going to be set to an enable parent it's not going to be disabled anything like that and now what we're going to want is an X marker now the X marker is going to be used to determine whether the plaques have been enabled or disabled it's just the best way to, to check this stuff at the moment so I'm going to drag and drop an X marker in press 2 to turn the gizmo off and I'm just going to place it where I want I'm going to give it a reference DF ref plaques Put red, ref, there we go. And this is going to be initially disabled. So let's get rid of that. And then I'm going to go to my craft object. So I assume that you have the similar system or you're gonna wait and get my system if you're using this, uh, my new one at least, uh, which is a heck of a lot easier to deal with, uh, but I'm not gonna be going through it here. I'm just going to be adding to my array for essentially what's gonna be disabled and enabled. In here, I'm going to add the collision box. That needs to be disabled. And then for enabled, needs to be the X marker. And giving it a reference, make sure that you're selecting the right thing. So I'm gonna do okay on both of those. Now what I want to do is go ahead and select all this stuff. I wanna hide it, double tap one. And the trick that we're gonna use here, because the base of the plaque is also going to be always there always visible but we've got to make it invisible now what you could do is actually no i was going to say something else but what what we are going to do we are going to use uh, null textures essentially we need to make a copy of this so we need to have our own versions because we are going to go under the model edit and we're going to add some null textures which essentially makes it invisible but you're still going to want something as, as sort of the, the visible part of the rack. This this might get a little bit confusing, but it will make sense when we're done. So I'm actually going to just put my abbrevi my sorry not abbreviation my prefix uh, for my mod uh, DF at the front of that. Click OK, and when it asks if you want to create a new form, yes, we don't want to overwrite the initial ones. And I'm going to do that for each one first. So I'm just going to edit the base of each part of the weapon rack. Put DF on the front, you put whatever you need to at the front, and create new forms of them. And then we've got the center one here, so I'll do DF for that one. Whoops. Create new form of that. Now we want to go back into each of them, edit the base, edit the model, and here you'll see that you've got textures are empty. If you just rotate this round, again hit the G key so we can hide the ground and right click and new and then type in null n u double l and you'll get null texture set so it's basically a blank texture and it will replace the textures on it to be nothing and we're going to do that for each and you're going to see well not see the plaques anymore so i'm just going to do that for each one dead simple Oh, don't know what happened there. What am I doing? Got lost in thought for a moment then. So we're just going to do null. Boom. Lovely jubbly. So as you can see, well, not see. <laughs> There's no uh, plaques there. If we do alt and one, you'll get the collision box. You will get the markers. And if we use the F4 trick again, you'll be able to just hide these markers and you'll be able to tell and select the actual base plaque. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's no good, Dark. 
Now I can't see the damn things at all. How are we going to enable them? Well, now we're going to make static versions of these that are linked with the X marker to sort of indicate that the, the plaques are there. So I'm going to double click, edit the base, and this time I'm going to click and hold and select across, right click copy, get the entire model path, come out of this, go under world object static, right click and new, and I'm just going to put df weapon plaque, I think that was the left part, so left static, you can call it whatever you like, but that's what I'm going to call this. And this is the first time on this machine, because this is my stream machine that I record on now, uh, that I have set this up. So give me a moment just to locate my Steam directory and Skyrim. So Steam apps common Skyrim. If you've been doing a lot of this yourself, this should already be here. But I just need to navigate to my meshes. Uh, very interestingly, meshes do not appear to be here. So I'm just going to create a meshes folder for myself and select meshes and as long as you're in meshes I'm going to control and V and paste in that file path and as long as I'm under meshes under my Skyrim data directory and okay it will find it and put it in and I'm going to do that for each of them so I'm going to go ahead on this one edit it select all of the model right click copy cancel out of it go under static I'm actually going to search for plaque so that I can easily create a right version of this without retyping everything go edit edit again it should automatically redirect to my meshes now do control and v okay 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 and create new form because i'm taking the left and making a right version just want to check that's there yes it is and then my centerpiece as well just going to copy that and i'm going to do the same again so I'm just going to put middle for this one. I know it's like a shield piece or whatnot, but that's fine. Again, name it whatever you like. And then I'm going to select, hold down control and select all three of these. And I am going to do control and D to duplicate. Now, it gets very, very fiddly now because what I've currently got selected are the ones that I would like to edit. Now, if I double tap one, they're going to be hidden. So the ones that I want to mess with are now hidden and it's going to keep them separated from these. I could drag them away and then try and snap them all back together, but I'm now going to go under my filter for the hidden ones and I'm going to type in plaque. Now, what it should have done is highlighted the hidden ones and it's decided not to do that. So that's quite frustrating. Let me just empty that and put DF. Here we go. It wasn't searching them quite right. So here I've got the highlighted in blue are the hidden versions of the racks. And you'll see that they're both activators, but we want to make these static. So I'm going to select the first one. I'm just going to use my middle mouse button just to click into the render window. So it's got it sort of in there and selected, but it doesn't deselect it. And I'm going to use control F. So I replace again. And under here, I've got a tick box for same base object type only. I'm going to untick it. Give this some time, depending on your computer specs, this could take a while because what it's doing is it's now getting a list of every single object that is in the game. So mine's already done and I'm just going to type in DF weapon and I'll get my DF weapon plaque and I want to get the left one and I want to replace it with a static version. And you'll sort of get hopefully the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm selecting the right one, just middle mousing into the render window, control and F. Again, this will now take a little while because it's still got that option deselected and it's getting every object in the game. I'm just going to do DF weapon and I'm going to do right. OK. And then I'm going to do the final one. Just here, you can actually start typing as it's kind of bringing the search up, but you might risk crashing it. Uh, but I've done it anyway. Uh, so do middle there, OK. And what we've got, we've now got static versions. And I just want to make sure they've got no references on them because I don't want these. Oh, hang on a minute. I think that may have selected the other ones. We're just going to do F4. 
do F4, and then that means that I shouldn't be able to accidentally select the actual ones that we've got. And I just want to make sure these don't have any link refs. They shouldn't do because they were copied and they wouldn't have copied the link references. And these are now just static weapon plaques, which wouldn't do anything on their own. But over the top of them are our markers. So if I do Alt 1 and then M, we've got our markers and our collision box there. And sitting on the top of it, is the actual weapon plaque doing its job. But now what we've got is we've got a visual representation of our weapon plaque that we can safely link to our X marker and enable and disable with our craft system without worrying about it breaking the actual rack. So the weapon rack is always there, but it's completely invisible with a sort of show off rack behind it. Hope that makes sense. It can be a bit confusing, but if I now use the batch menu, which is dash on the keyboard, and then do set enable parent, select reference in render window, and double click on my X marker, make sure it's got DFREF plaques, click do under set enable parent at the top here, do, and you should see some arrows appear. And what we've now got, like I say, is a visual representation which is enabled and disabled and a collision box preventing you from accidentally activating your plaque before you've crafted the plaques themselves. Really, really confusing, but it is the workaround that I came up with. This took so many hours trying to troubleshoot and test this and come up with a workaround because essentially if you were to just straight up take the normal weapon plaques, the objects for them and enable parent them to the X marker, you will risk just breaking it and it just doesn't want to work. Uh, again, I'm not sure how the official Hearthfire system handles that. I didn't really look into the scripts. I just came up with my own solution. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to work with, a little bit tricky to get set up, but once you've done one or two and it's working, it's all good. So what we're going to do now just to finish off the video is we're going to dive in game as usual and we're going to see if it's working. Okay, so here we are. Let's go into the White Run Breeze home, which I have absolutely destroyed at this point, but it's fine for this video. And again, I haven't showed how the crafting system works whatsoever. This is coming in a video after this one, so uh, do stay tuned for that. Um, so if you're using an old crafting system, your old crafting system, whatever you use to enable and disable, uh, like I said, that that's what you're gonna have to hook up to this. Uh, but just to demonstrate, You'll see that there are no plaques there because the static versions are gone. The collision box is preventing us from selecting anything. We can't do anything there. And if we come up here and grab my firewood, go onto my workbench under weapon racks and weapon plaque and create a new item and craft it with the confirmation. Come out. It's gone off the menu. Turn around. The plaque is visible and also the collision box has been disabled and we can now access the weapon plaque. This is currently broken because this is the one that we copy and pasted a little earlier in the video and it doesn't quite work right. Um, so I'd need to do some tweaking, some rotation and whatnot. Again, very buggy things, but you should be able to get them to work eventually. And there we go. That's how you get your weapon plaque set up with a crafting system and hopefully working as intended and you would do the same sort of system for a, a weapon rack uh, like the one that we did have in the corner that I've now deleted. So that is just about it for this creation kit tutorial video. I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section down below and check out my website for more content at www.darfox127.co.uk. I also stream a lot of this stuff over on Twitch, so be sure to go and check me out over there and please consider supporting me over on Patreon as there are a lot more videos to come after this one. Thank you all very much for watching and I will speak to you all next time.